Good morning and welcome. Um, I'm Daphna Adler, I'm one of the counselors here at Los Altos High School. And this is our study in Ireland workshop, which is part of International University Month. And I am so glad to introduce a wonderful panel of university representatives from our um, Irish universities. So they're going to do um, a slide presentation momentarily and talk about each of their schools and um, quite a lot about how wonderful Ireland is, which I can attest to. I have visited um, all of these universities on a, on a um, counselor tour several years ago and was, was pretty magical. So um, I'm excited for them to share information with students today. So we have today Amanda Lundberg from Trinity College in Dublin. Allison Ryan from Mary Immaculate College in Limerick and Neve Kavanaugh from University of Limerick. We've got Patrick Smith from University College Dublin, Patty Hayden from Maynooth University, which is a bit outside of Dublin, and Maggie Cardozi from University College Cork. And I'm gonna turn it over to Maggie and she's gonna kick it off today. All right. <laughs> Cool. So um, thanks so much, Daphna, for having us. Um, let me get this slideshow going for us. Um, so cool. Um, I think maybe, um, you know, we'll, so we'll go around again and just like introduce ourselves and say um, where we're based and where we're from. Um, and then we'll kind of go into the presentation. So um, once again, my name is Maggie Cardosi. Um, I am the North American officer for University College Cork, and I'm based in the New York City area, um, and I um, look after all the students from the United States and Canada. Um, Patrick, do you wanna go? Sure. Oh, wanna go next? Um, yeah, so my name's Patrick Smith, and I'm the North America representative for University College Dublin. And I'm based in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, and kind of like Maggie, I work with students from um, all over the US and Canada. Neve, how about you? Perfect, we'll run this in order. Hi, I'm Neve yeah. Kavna, and I'm the university rep for the University of Limerick. Um, and I get to look after all the students coming from the Western side of the world, from North, Central and Latin America. So. Um, across all the United States and all over the whole top and bottom continent. All right, I'm Amanda. I'm from Trinity College Dublin and I'm based in Texas and cover sort of the whole central region of the US and I have um, several colleagues also based here in the US that look after other regions. So hi uh, everybody, I'm Patty Hayden. I'm the US North American, sorry, the North American coordinator I'm at Maynooth University, which is just outside Dublin, and I'm originally from Indiana, near Chicago. And hi, everybody. I'm Alison. I'm representing Mary Immaculate College in Limerick, and I am actually here living in Limerick. So uh, my area is mostly around North America, so missing the travel there at the moment, but hopefully we'll give you a bit of an idea what we're about. So thanks everybody and thanks again to, to Daphna for inviting us to, to chat with you today. Um, today in the presentation we're going to talk a little bit about um, why you would want to come study in Ireland and um, also tell you a little bit about our degree structure and application process, um, kind of what money matters are, finances, fees, scholarships, things like that. Um, tell you a little bit about our kind of diverse campus life and student supports, what you can look forward to doing after you graduate from an Irish university. And then we'll each take a few minutes to um, talk to you about what makes our universities special. So sorry, one second, I'm gonna get this going again. Um, but for right now, once the slideshow decides to behave again, um, I'm gonna hand it over to Allison to talk to you a little bit about um, why you'd wanna study in, in Ireland. Thanks, Maggie. Yeah, so why would you want to study in Ireland? Well, I might be a little bit biased, but we do have definitely a few international students who will attest to some of this. Uh, we are a safe, friendly and welcoming uh, country. Now, technically, we are actually very safe because we actually rank number 12 on the Global Peace Index, which is pretty high. Our nearest neighbours are the United Kingdom. Uh, I consider them very safe, but they're actually only at number 42. So when it comes to, to how safe we are, I think Ireland is at a little bit extra. 
Um, we are globally connected and a multicultural society. It goes without saying that, you know, that we are an island. We are very much, you know, we're not stuck on the island anymore. We have as much people coming here now as we do people who used to leave many years ago. Um, we are uh, an English speaking member of the EU. So I guess when it comes to the UK, they will no longer be a member of the EU. Um, but we certainly are. Now, while they're technically, we do have two languages here, it's Irish and English. But just to clarify, nobody in the country can actually speak Irish. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. It's very much English speaking all the way. Uh, the breathtaking landscapes, stunning coasts and vibrant cities. Ireland has been, you know, Irish people have discovered that themselves during lockdown when they couldn't actually leave the country. Everyone is just rediscovering how fabulous the country is. In terms of our universities, the top one to two percent worldwide. Um, and definitely they are internationally recognized degree programs. So there is no worry about whether they'll be accepted back at home or whether they'll be accepted if you want to travel on to another country. Um, definitely there's diverse campuses with a robust student life as well. If you want a big university that's more like a small village, you'll get those. If you prefer a smaller, more intimate campus, you'll get those as well. So there's a little bit for, for everybody, I feel, in, with the, um, the offering from Ireland. Right, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about our undergraduate degrees and how they work. Um, so as you saw from the map before, there's we have 10 major universities in Ireland. Um, and the academic year structure is fairly similar to the US. So we offer, um, we have teaching that takes place usually between September and May, and there will be um, several breaks for revision and exams, things like that. Um, and then as far as the programs go, we have three or four year programs, depending on the school um, that you're looking at that are available. And we offer a full gamut of subjects. So arts and humanities, politics, business, lots and lots of STEM subjects and specializations. Um, the only exception I would say to the to these three and four year programs are degrees, you know, such as professional law, medicine, veterinarian medicine, things like that. They're, they're slightly longer programs, of course. Um, and then we have direct entry programs. So what this means is you do start your major from, from day one and we there's no general education requirement. So this is a great fit for those who know what they want to do, of course. Um, but many of our schools also offer flexible interdisciplinary programs as well. Um, and then just a few more flexible course options um, for you. The way that our, our, our programs are structured is we have single honor programs where you'll just study one subject on its own. And then we also offer joint honors programs, which are usually two subjects together um, offered as a major minor or a double major. Um, but it's, also, it's good to know that sometimes often the joint honors are restricted to specific schools or disciplines. So that's something to, to note. Um, but yeah, that's generally how our undergraduate degrees work. And I'm going to hand over to Maggie for the next slide. Yeah. So the application process in Ireland is pretty straightforward. Um, what is a little bit different, uh, kind of two things to keep in mind, is that um, you should plan to apply to each of us directly. So there is no sort of common application program across the, um, the island of Ireland or the Republic of Ireland, um, the same that there would be like the common app in the United States or the UCAS system in the United Kingdom. Um, that is to say though, that some of our schools do participate in the common app. So you might be able to find um, some of us there, but others um, like UCC and, and some others as well, um, you would need to apply directly um, via the online application. Um, the other kind of thing to keep in mind, and this goes along with what Amanda was saying about how our degree programs are very structured and that you apply directly into a particular program, um, you, you, do, you don't apply to the university as a whole. So you're going to be submitting an application to um, say, arts at UCD or sciences at UCC um, or what have you. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and when, um, when you're applying, you should be uh, prepared to have um, your most up-to-date high school transcript on hand, um, also letters of recommendation, and um, a typically will ask for personal statements as well. And these personal statements should be tailored um, to the particular subject area that you're interested in studying. Um, while we think that it's great to, um, you know, be able to write a creative piece about, you know, what, um, what maybe piece of furniture you most identify with or something like that. Um, it's a great exercise, um, but we're looking more as to why you're interested in studying with a particular university for a particular subject. 
Um, so, and the other thing too is that um, we will typically look for um, SAT or ACT scores, but many of us are revising those um, requirements for this year in light of um, the, the issues posed um, with safe access because of the pandemic. So um, we encourage you to speak to each of us individually. And I think when we get into our institutional profiles, we'll talk a little bit more about what we're requiring for um, fall 2021 entry. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna cover really quickly the all important fees and finances. So um, just speaking from experience, because I did my undergraduate degree in the US, the um, cost of attendance um, in Ireland is super competitive and super affordable. The average cost of attendance for one academic year is approximately $38,000. Um, now that does depend on what university you're in and you know what the living uh, arrangements are like accommodation and things like that. So it can vary a little bit, but just to give you an idea, there are tuition scholarships available um, with some of our universities. So that's always something good to look into and investigate. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to any of us for more information. And it's really great because we do accept FAT, FAFSA. So we do accept the direct loan program as well as um, veteran benefits and the GI bill. So that can be very helpful in um, you know, just uh, all of your expenses and things like that. So just to give you an idea, um, we just did a quick comparison of some of the universities in the US. So, so just to give an idea of out of state costs in the US, University of Oregon, over $56,000, um, University of Washington in Seattle, over $57,000, and then University of Michigan, we're looking at over $67,000. So as you can see by the, our cost of attendance, um, it's very affordable and, um, and, and, you know, we can answer any questions you have about this, the, this subject because we know it's an important part of your decision making process. Thanks. So I get to talk about the, the fun part of the college experience, as important as the academic piece is, uh, campus life, life is, you know, one of the main focuses for your when you become a young adult and go to university and as I'm on campus here at the University of Limerick in Ireland um, I've been seeing students going around and enjoying the experience with the COVID restrictions but hopefully by the time you're coming to study with us we'll be back to full normality. It's really important that you get involved in all the different sports clubs and societies. Um, I'd highly recommend getting involved in at least five clubs in your first year because that's where you're going to meet your best friends, maybe your future husbands, wives or partners uh, down along the line. Um, a student union is a great resource for students to get involved in. They're your representative body on campus and they generally run the, cl run the clubs and societies as well. So you can become a class rep, you can you know join different councils or become part of the clubs and societies committees and society and um, organizations that are there opportunities to travel there is opportunities to do a study abroad while doing a study abroad but we call it a little bit different we call it an exchange or an erasmus program if you go outside of the eu it's called an exchange program if you go within the eu it's called the erasmus program and we actually give you a little bit of funding to help you with that you know adjusting to life in the other country so that's really really important you can probably get about a thousand us dollars uh, roughly give or take depending on where you're going around europe other supports that we have on campus, not taking away from how important, you know, academic life is, um, we do have all the fun stuff, but it is important to keep in touch and keep your academics going because that's the main purpose while you're here. So we have tutors, disability services, uh, careers opportunities where you can do CV workshops, mock interviews, everything like that. I think all of us across the whole sector have a very strong career service with all in all of our institutions. You have the peer to peer counseling, health services, uh, chaplaincies, every, all of those different resources. Um, Ireland really prides themselves on international student support and that's a big focus for us um, as going forward. So you can be sure that yourself as a student or mums and dads that are on the calls, your sons and daughters will be looked after while studying here with us in Ireland. All right, so talking about after graduation, um, one thing I always like to point out is that Ireland ranks in the top 10 globally uh, for countries whose students meet the needs of a diverse global economy. So all of our programs that we're gonna be talking about um, really set your students, or 
set yourself up for success. Um, like Neve was saying, we all have campus career services, especially with international students. Um, they'll, they'll work with you to kind of Europeanize your, your CV, your resume to make um, your experience and your background really applicable to the Irish job market. Um, all of our universities are internationally recognized. So if you wanna come back to the US, um, there, there's a lot of transferability um, in our degrees. Um, but if you wanted to stay in Ireland, we make it really easy for you. Um, so Dublin and Cork, uh, kind of two of the larger cities in Ireland are um, bases for a lot of um, multinational, mainly tech companies. So Apple, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, all based in Ireland with their European headquarters. Um, but also if you wanted to work kind of more on the startup, you know, kind of smaller companies, there's a lot of opportunities as well. Um, and logistics wise, uh, you can work part time during your degree, um, but then you can also work full time for a year after your degree, um, just with a bachelor's degree. So they make it really easy and really accessible um, for you to access uh, jobs in Ireland. And then also, you know, we're if you stay in Ireland, if you come back to the States, um, you will have access to some pretty strong alumni networks. Um, so especially in the States, you know, New York, Boston, Chicago, all of our universities primarily have um, some, some pretty large alumni networks in those cities um, just to help you, you know, stay connected um, and, and really get ahead in the job market. All right, well, I'll kick off our individual sort of institution overviews. Um, again, I'm, um, I'm Amanda from Trinity and just a quick snapshot kind of of, of our school but um, and of the courses itself. We have programs from across the board with specializations within each program you can see on the screen. I won't, or I won't read them out to you, but you can kind of see, get a gist of what we offer um, with, the, with subject areas. There's over 600 options available between our undergraduate and postgraduate. Um, program. So that's quite a lot to choose from. Um, but just sort of an overview of the school itself. We were founded in 1592 um, and we're known as one of the ancient universities in Europe. And I still can't get my head around that number because it's, you know, almost two year, 200 years older than the U.S. So it's, it's a, it's, um, we've got a lot of history um, definitely on campus. Uh, we're located in the center of Dublin, and while Dublin is a is the capital um, and it is a capital city, it definitely has a much smaller city feel to it. So you don't feel like you're in, you know, a giant city, um, you know, such as New York, things like that. You do feel it does feel um, a lot more quaint in in some in a lot of ways. And we have an enclosed campus as well. So once you're through the main Trinity gates, you do feel like you're on a campus. You don't feel like you're in the city anymore. Um, as far as our student body, we have around 18,000 students total, about 13,000 of those are undergraduate, and um, around 28% of our students are international. So you definitely won't be alone. You won't be the only one not from Ireland. Um, and our, our international students represent around 130 different nationalities. So quite a lot of um, um, diversity and multicultural um, you know, backgrounds that you'll be mixing with. And like, like some of my colleagues said, we have a global room on campus. So some of these specific international student supports, um, that's a fantastic place to get advice and support, but also just to hang out. Um, and we put on a lot of events for students throughout the year, um, celebrating you know, international and national holidays. So that's always quite nice to, to be one way to kind of get to know other international students. Um, but a few things that make Trinity special and unique, we offer a dual BA program with Columbia and New York. Um, this is a kind of a built-in study abroad. So you, all students will start off in, um, at Trinity for the first two years, then they move to, to New York for their final two years. Um, and you do get a degree from each school. So pretty, pretty neat way to, to achieve two different undergraduate degrees. Um, another um, uh, known fact, we're, we're quite well known for producing entrepreneurs within Europe, and we're really proud of the innovation that goes on on campus. Um, and I think several of my um, Colleagues here will also have similar, um, you know, similar programs as well. But we, if you, if you're a business student or not, we we love being able to help get some of those business ideas, you know, our different sort of entrepreneurial um, um, endeavors off the ground. So that's one thing we're proud of. Um, another thing that we offer is personal tutors. So we do, we offer these to all of our students from, from day one. So this is an academic advisor and a mentor, um, you know, great resource of someone to, to check in with, um, someone that can help with networking for work experience, internships, that sort of thing. 
um, and where we love being able to offer that to our students, knowing that you're going coming from a very different background um, and kind of jumping into uh, a completely different culture and different academic structure um, in general. And then um, just finally, we have some specific scholarships for US students. So we do um, do as much as we can to help with funding and making you know, studying abroad a reality for, for US students here. So we love being able to offer those to you guys as well. Um, but yeah, Trinity is uh, steeped in history, reputation for excellence, education. Um, we've been, our, our sort of motto is that we've been inspiring generations of brilliant thinkers for over 400 years. So that's my last line for you and I'll hand over to one of my colleagues. All right, um, so University College Dublin would be Ireland's largest university. Um, so we have around 32,000 students altogether, um, and around 8,000 of those would be international students. Um, so we're also Ireland's global university. Uh, so a third of our staff and faculty are from outside of Ireland as well. So you definitely get um, a real international um, global feel when you're on campus. We are located in Dublin, but um, we're about 20 minutes just south of the city center on, um, on public transportation. So um, there's a lot of green space, a lot of, um, lot, lot of space to spread out. Um, so you definitely do kind of get a more US state school vibe when you're on campus. You have the quads, you have the people outside eating lunch, the student center and the on-campus accommodation. Um, so you know, while it is a European university, there definitely are some aspects um, of US universities that you'll see on campus with UCD. Um, so in terms of programs overall, so we have over 270 degree options. Um, like we were saying a little bit before um, with the direct entry route. So all of our courses would be direct entry, um, but we do have a pretty unique course um, called the Liberal Arts and Science Pathway, um, which is almost like coming in undecided um, like you would um, like you would in the States. So, you know, don't feel like you have to decide from day one what subject you're going to study. We do have a lot of flexible options for you in terms of programs that, that you select. Um, you know, Neve talked a lot about the importance of getting involved on campus. And um, as an alum of UCD myself, I can de definitely touch on um, just how lively it is as a campus. Um, so over 130 um, different clubs and societies on campus, a very active student body, um, you know, whether that's uh, political societies, debating societies, sports clubs, um, performance uh, societies, there's always something going on on campus, uh, which I really think kind of adds the overall flavor of UCD. Um, specifically for US students, we have an American football team. They're horrible. So if you have any football skills, please help us out. Um, but then we also do, um, you know, Thanksgiving celebrations for our US students. Um, and we have an American Student Society as well. So just a little bit extra support um, on campus for US students. Um, we are ranked number one in the country for graduate employability. So, um, you know, if you'd like to stay in Ireland after uh, graduation, we make it really easy with the um, career services, with the fairs, with the internships that we offer, um, and just that extra level of student support overall. Um, so I think that's it for, for my end, uh, but happy to answer questions afterwards. I'm just going to toss it on over to one of my colleagues. Let's see. All right, I'll go next. Um, so hi again, um, Maggie here from University College Cork. So I'm going to take you about two and a half hours south um, from Dublin, where you just were, um, talk to you a little bit about UCC. Um, we were founded in 1845. And um, what, although at the time we were a little bit outside of the city limits, um, the city has definitely grown around us in the last 175 odd years since our founding. Um, right now, it's about a 10 minute walk to the heart of the city center in Cork. So um, it's a really nice balance. Um, I think if you're looking for kind of a small town feel, but also access to all the things that people love about living in cities, like access to arts and culture, um, travel opportunities, museums, um, food. Cork is a huge foodie city, so if you love to eat food or study food or just know about food, um, you're going you're gonna to really love it down here in Cork. Um, we're quite close to the sea as well. We're down on the south coast. So um, the, the sea and environmentalism and sustainability is very much a part of our culture. Um, and UCC actually, um, because of that, um, we've actually been voted, or uh, we're designated as the first, 
first green campus in the world. So if um, sustainability is very important to you, um, you'd be a great fit for our campus. Um, we have, we're on about 45 acres, so it's, it's very walkable. And I think this is, this is something that I really like about Cork. Um, I love the fact that I can get anywhere I need to go, um, uh, via the power of my own two feet. Um, you can also cycle. A lot of people do that in Ireland, so you're welcome to do that as well. Um, what makes UCC special, I think, is in addition to kind of the balance and also the beautiful buildings and architecture that we have, um, is that we're a very student-centered campus. Um, we are number one in Ireland for the student experience, and it's because of um, the fact that we take a multi-layered approach to our student supports. Um, so from the very beginning, whether it's talking to me over here on this side of the pond to help support you through your application process, to meeting my colleagues in the international office once you arrive to getting involved with clubs and societies or maybe um, becoming a peer mentor yourself. Um, there are a lot of people behind you to help you feel empowered to make the most out of this really unique experience that you're about to have. Um, we're also one of the top universities in Ireland for industry engagement. Um, so we have a lot of partners um, and companies that are based in Cork, um, you know, in fields like pharmaceuticals, um, ICT, engineering, um, marine and energy development, um, and food science. I mentioned the food part. We're not kidding. Um, a lot of food science in Cork. So, um, and all of these companies, um, are either kind of involved in developing our curriculum or are actually taking our students on as part of industry placement. Um, that's something that um, we're really well known for. Um, our degree programs typically involve either industry placement or study abroad because we prioritize making our students work ready and world ready. Um, we're a global university. We have about 22,000 students total and around 15% of them, so around 3,500 at any given time, are from outside of Ireland, so it's a really diverse campus. Um, and academically, um, we're really strong in the sciences, but we also have quite a lot on offer in arts and humanities, law, health sciences, um, and business as well. Um, a couple of the kind of niche programs that I think are really cool that um, are pretty unique to UCC is that um, we have, we're actually the only um, school that offers an anthropology undergraduate major and public health undergraduate major. Um, we also have some cool programming in the sciences like genetics and chemistry with forensic science. So um, again, if you're interested in those areas, um, definitely come chat with me. Um, we also do have scholarships available for international students. So um, we talked a lot about affordability earlier and um, we, try, we try to definitely make that the case. So um, anyway, thank you so much for listening and I'm gonna pass it on to, to the next university. Hi everyone, you're back here with us in Limerick. Um, thanks, Maggie. So similar to a lot of the universities in Ireland, we all offer a lot of the generic same programs when it comes to arts, humanities, social sciences, across the business and different areas. For the University of Limerick, we offer a couple of niche little programs, um, especially around the Bachelor of Law, our law program, our Law Plus program, you can do our undergraduate law program and actually transfer back to the United States via New York. So you can sit the New York bar with our undergraduate law program because the internships that we have embedded in all of our undergraduate programs qualify the internship piece for the, the New York bar. Now, when you want to transfer back to the state of California, there's an extra couple of steps, but our law professor, uh, Dr. Shane Cummins, will go through that with students. So that's just a, a little niche, niche element for, for you to know about that. We have the most amazing performing arts, um, the Irish World Academy for Music and Dance. They solely focus on music and dance. So it's not theater studies or anything like that. I absolutely adore that building. So those are two really kind of niche areas that you'll find at the University of Limerick. Limerick City then, just to talk a little bit about city before I go into our lovely rankings, is the third largest city in Ireland. Um, I like to call us the, wild, the gateway to the wild Atlantic way. As we're right just at the corner of it and once you get past the river shannon you get to see some amazing beaches and trails uh, up along the west coast so starting down around the cork area all the way up to donegal which is wonderful for students to be able to travel and get around we're probably the most central city then when you think about it to get to all the other major cities in ireland so it's an hour to galway two and a bit hours to dublin and an hour and a half or so down to cork one thing um as i mentioned when we we're talking about campus life is really 
how Irish universities support the international students. And that's one thing that's really important to me. And I'm so glad to say that we're number one in the world for international student support and that we're number one in global student activities as well. Because we wanna make sure that we look after your sons and daughters or yourself as much as we possibly can, both inside and outside the classroom. Similar to you know, all the universities in Ireland, we have a huge focus on graduate employability. And that's it because of all the, for us, it's grown to being 97% graduate employability or further education because of the internships um, embedded in all the programs and they're paid internships. So that's really, really important. And it's organized by the university. But people don't understand the reason why industry is so important to our, in Ireland is because it's one of our major um, reasons to keep the economy going. We don't have oil, we don't have coal, we don't have massive exports. So what we do use is the education of the workforce to get multinational companies to base themselves in Ireland. So that's really, really important. And it also means that students are getting a global qualification that will transfer anywhere in the world as well with the University of Limerick um, with those ties, because those companies wouldn't set up here if they didn't have students with internationally recognized degrees. Best bit of advice I can give you going forward, and I can see Maggie's hovering there to, to, to kick me on next. Never, <laughs> um, never, 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 <laughs> is take the leap. Really consider an international school because you will not, not regret it. You will um, develop and, you know, learn things about yourself that you would have never have done if you didn't think of the opportunity to go internationally. Go for it, Maggie. I, I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're up, Alison. <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. So I'll be the last college presenting. Um, I suppose I'm also in Limerick, so I'm not going to bore you and double down on the Limerick information because uh, Neve did such a great job there. But what I will say is that the population of Limerick City is in and around 100,000, and 30,000 of those are actually students. So we're very much a student city here in Limerick. Um, Mary Mack herself is actually based in the city. So we're a little bit about 15 minutes walk from the city centre on one side and another 15 minute walk from a huge shopping mall on the other side. So you're kind of right in the centre of it all there. Um, I suppose because we're right in the middle of a suburb as well, but we do have a lot of student accommodation and then there's a lot of private accommodation that is rented out to students. So in fact, students have a huge um, array of, of different accommodations to choose from. And of course, it is the international office that will actually find the accommodation. We, we will give the options to students and let them know what's out there, the different costs. Students will pick it themselves. We, we would never expect any students to just pick somewhere themselves randomly. So we're, we're always there to support our students. In terms of when we were established, it was actually in 1898. So that picture there is actually our foundation building. That was the very first building. Uh, we do have quite a lot of, there's a mixture of old and newer buildings on campus. So further back, there's, there's even more buildings that have been um, brought up within the last 10 years. Um, academically speaking, we are a little different from the other institutes. So we are actually a college of education and liberal arts. So we don't offer the, the full spectrum of um, qualifications that everybody else would. But we do have a fantastic liberal arts degree that's definitely one of the most popular ones, particularly with our US students. So you get a dual major with that. Um, there's about 13 different subjects to choose from. Um, education then, we can certainly offer second level education to our uh, international students. Uh, with uh, primary level, you do need a bit of the Irish language, so sadly we can't offer that. Um, our Applied Theatre Studies is, what is a fantastic programme. It's more than just the performance side, it's actually a little bit of the, the technical side as well. And then we have our, our early childhood care and education too. So all of our programmes as well, we have diploma, masters and up to PhD level. Um, we are, I would say, 5,000 students. It's definitely on the smaller side. Um, but even with that, we still host about 500 international students annually. So that's between our long-term and our short-term uh, programs there. We also collaborate with over 50 partner institutions all over the globe. And like all of the other uh, institutes, that, that's important because our students can avail of international mobility. 
Um, now, what is slightly different is that um, most of our programs they are four years, and certainly for our Irish students in the third year, they are expected to do the study abroad for the industry placement. But for our international students, because they are already studying abroad, we actually make year three optional. So some of our international students will decide, yes, I do want to maybe study in Asia for a semester or a year. Um, and then others will decide, you know what, after second year, I, I'll go straight into year four and I, I'll do my, my degree in three years. And that's all dependent on, on the student themselves and their saving tuition of a, a fourth year then. Um, basically, yeah, that's, I probably have so much more to say about, about Mary Immaculate College. Uh, we're kind of cousins with the University of Limerick in a way because your, your degree would actually be from the University of Limerick, but you are getting that, that smaller um, campus experience with, with MIC and the international office is always there to, to help our students. So thank you for listening to me. Cool, we're gonna circle back. <laughs> Take it away, Hi. Daddy. <laughs> Thanks, Maggie. Oh, yeah, um, the last one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just to kind of just first let you know, where is Maynooth? It's in County Kildare. Um, it's about 15 miles um, outside of Dublin, so super easy to get into the city center by um, bus or train, which uh, the train station's right outside the gates of campus, so it makes it very handy. So just to really quickly, mm -hmm. um, we, we offer a lot of different um, majors as well, um, also postgraduate degree, just a couple um, things that make us a little different that we do have the only Department of Anthropology in the Republic. So that's um, kind of an exciting thing that Maynooth um, uh, likes to, to let people know. And also our BA arts degree is probably one of our most popular degrees. And the reason for that is students can choose from 36 subjects over nine faculties. And what happens there is in the first four weeks of your first year or your freshman year, um, you'd be able to kind of try out different uh, lectures from all the, those different departments and kind of give, gives you a feel for what you think you might be interested in and kind of narrow down where your interests really lie. And then after that four weeks, then you do choose the subjects you want to study. So um, it's, it's just kind of a nice way to get a, a feel for a lot of different areas before you decide. Um, the other thing, just to let you know, again, uh, not as old as Trinity, but um, we were established in 1795 as St. Patrick's College. So that's the, the building you see there in the picture is um, St. Joseph's Hall, uh, that is what they call it. So it's nice because Maynooth does give you that feeling of the best of both worlds. You have the small town feel, but again, jump on the bus or the train and you can get straight into um, the city center. So uh, we do like that, that option for students that they can kind of have the best of both worlds. You can walk anywhere you want, um, Maynooth. It's, it's all in walking distance, the shops and the restaurants and, and all the rest. Um, another thing we just would like to note is that there are approximately 14,000 students at Maynooth from 90 different countries. So we do um, have a very diverse campus and we're we have a lot of uh, international students did, that do come in. And just, uh, I didn't put this down on the slide, but just to let you know, because I know it can be a bit stressful thinking about accommodation when you're coming, not only to a different country, but a new school and things like that, that we will guarantee on-campus accommodation for all incoming international students for their first year. And then subsequent years, then you can decide what you want to do. You may want to live off campus with friends um, or whatever. So uh, other thing just to note is that uh, we're Ireland's leading institution on climate change research. So that's super exciting. And um, like all the other universities, we have a very safe and friendly atmosphere. So that's all for me. Thank you. Well, and thank you again for listening to us. Um, these we've got here our contact information. So um, you're more than welcome to email each of us, but uh, if there are any questions, we'd be happy to answer some questions now. Um, let's see here. <laughs> um, I guess, you know, so go ahead and feel free to put those questions into the chat, but um, maybe like, 
I know, and Neve, you kind of started this out by like giving a piece of advice, but maybe we could each um, go around and give like a recommendation or, you know, something that we feel like students should should keep in mind as, um, you know, they're, they're looking at Irish options or um, international options in general. Um, Amanda, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, I can get us started. Um, I feel like that that's a that's a hard question to answer because there are so many things that I would probably want to say. Um, but I think yeah, when you're looking at studying internationally, I think already you're going to have you know that you're going to have an open mind when you're considering international schools generally. But that's one big thing to kind of to to keep at your the forefront as well is yes, we're going to offer some very similar um, experiences to U.S. colleges, but um, some of my colleagues and I, we've been, we discussed this recently, you're also going to be in a new culture. So it's just keeping that open mind and being open to those new experiences and being open to, yes, it's English speaking, but there'll be definitely some different vocabulary that you'll learn and things like that. So I feel like it's, it's always good to just for, to touch on that and to, to know um, some of the differences um, that make studying in a different country so special. Just one thing. I'll give you one thing. <laughs> uh, Patty, do you want to go? Yeah, so um, just like Amanda, I 100% uh, agree with that as well. I think the other thing to keep in mind is, and I think Neve touched on this um, earlier, is that to get outside of your comfort zone, you've already taken a huge jump to come to a different country, but there's going to be clubs and societies that you may have never come across. Um, in the US. So even the, the Irish sports that are available, even though you've never played um, Gaelic football before, um, just give it a try. It's a, it is an extremely um, friendly environment. So again, I just wanna reiterate the, the clubs and societies that are available on our campuses um, are a huge part of the, the student experience. So I would highly recommend to get involved in those. Allison, do you want to, well, you can go next and then I'll go and Patrick and then Neve. Okay, well, from my point of view, I would say there is absolutely no question that is too silly to ask. I mean, we, we all work in an international office and we completely understand that you are over in another country, potentially looking at moving your whole life over to this country. So, you know, even aside from asking questions, you can ask us to get on video calls with you, ask us to get on video calls with your parents. We are literally here to make sure that you feel as comfortable as possible when you do eventually make the move. And it definitely was mentioned in one of the presentations that the international offices here are very hands-on, and we are. I think most of us do actually understand that I know when I was that age, oh my gosh, go to another country to study, never even occurred to me. So I just think people who have it on top of mind, they need to know that they have the support here. And, and I really do need to emphasize that they absolutely do have that. And I think too, um, so my, my piece of advice would be more in like selecting what you're going to study. So, um, you know, a few of us have these flexible flexible options, but in general, you do need need to know. And I know that's quite different from what we, we have here in the United States, but I would say don't stress out about that. Study what you're passionate about and, and the rest will follow. Um, so not, I would say don't get too bogged down in what your exact career outcome will be because you know, you just need to embrace the journey. And if you're studying something that you love already, the, the rest of, of the puzzle pieces will fall into place. And we've talked a lot about all of these kind of career centers and um, what we do to help support you. So there are gonna be people um, to kind of help you along the way. And if you're studying something that you love, um, you know, you you will fall into something that um, hopefully you, you equally as love. So um, that would be my piece of advice. Yeah, and everyone said, you know, such great uh, tips and, and advice. I, I would just add on, you know, just be adventurous. Um, I think something that, you know, we've been talking about with just how great Ireland is, it's, you know, very accessible as well. So, you know, even if you're studying in, in Dublin, you can just hop on a bus and get to Galway or Cork or Limerick or, you know, and anywhere really in, in a pretty short amount of time. So um, th there's so many opportunities to explore and, and see new places. Um, we're obviously talking about Ireland, but you're going to be in Europe. So, you know, whether that's hopping on a plane and going to Spain, France, or, or Germany for a weekend, you know, there, 
literally, you know, possibilities are endless. Just get out and, and see a new way of life, see a new culture, um, and, and have that complement your academic experience overall. Perfect. And then the last bit of advice, um, everyone's, you know, I can't speak enough. They, they, everyone's hit the great points. But for me, I would say, you know, you guys are on a, a really adventurous opportunity at the moment, deciding where you're going to go and where you're going to develop as a young adult. And what I recommend is do as much research as you possibly can. And don't be persuaded by, oh, my best friend is going to this university, so I'm going to follow follow them to that university, but I really love this other university, go with your gut, go with the one that you're most excited about, whether that's UCC, Maynooth, UCD, Mary I, ourselves, Trinity, or UCAL, or, you know, somewhere in France, but go with the place that your heart wants the most, because that's where you will be the most successful, and that's where you'll really, really, like, excel as a young adult and as a student. Um, and I'm jealous every time I, I speak to students, I'm jealous that they get these amazing opportunities that I wish I had when I was studying and I'd nearly go back just to be able to, to do it all over again. Yeah. So, and I did see a question, thanks everybody. Um, I did see a question to, um, to us kind of to maybe clear, clarify a little bit about what student housing and student living looks like, um, you know, I'd say in general, it's much more independent than um, kind of the dorming system in the United States. So our student housing um, tends to all be student apartments. So everybody gets their own room, sometimes even their own ensuite bathroom, um, but most often, you know, maybe two bathrooms shared between five or six people in an apartment with a kitchenette and a shared living space. So it's a bit more independent. And as far as I know, we don't really have meal plans in the same way that US schools would, but there, that doesn't mean that people are going to go hungry. Um, there are lots of options on our campuses, um, you know, to go to a cafeteria or a cafe. And then in the surrounding areas, um, there are lots of restaurant options. Um, so if students wanna go grocery shopping for themselves, they can do that and prepare their own meals or they can pay somebody else to do that. But it's a bit more of an a la carte situation than it would be at a US school. Um, does, does anybody wanna maybe add on to that? Like any other words of wisdom? Uh, just on the accommodation piece, something that does differ a little bit is um, the dorm type style stuff. We don't really do that here in Ireland. Um, I don't know if you hit on that Maggie, sorry, my audio cut out. Um, yeah, so it's private bedrooms, um, yeah. The only other thing, if you did cover. Oh, sorry. I was the only other thing I was I was going to add was um was just that I think most of our schools do help with finding accommodation and guarantee it for for international students. So that's one thing to to not be too worried about. We will help you in your search, and we will be able to to get you settled in as well. Uh, I think there's one good phrase that we can use for all of us um, is that our offices tend to turn into the Irish mammy for you. Um, you know, we'll be the Irish mammy here to look after you and to make sure that you're kept safe and kept well. Until you find you, until you meet friends to take you home um, to have yes. meals cooked for you by their own Irish moms yeah. or grannies. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Um, any other questions? Students, this is the time. Do it. Do it. Um, I hope that. Um, one thing that you took away from this um, that, that everyone touched on was just how warm and personal this, this experience is. Um, the um, international staff, as, as several people mentioned, really are there for students. Like you will always know where to turn. If something happens, if you have questions, if you don't know where to find something, whatever it is, um, there really are so many resources. and. Um, and along the application process too, if you have questions or you are not sure how to fill something out or anything that comes up, um, please do reach out to them. They're there to help you and they really want students and their parents to feel comfortable with this whole process. They, they're very aware that parents are sending their, their child halfway across the world and they want everyone to feel comfortable with that. Um, feel free to reach out to me and I can put you in touch with them as well um, at, at any point during the year. Um, it's, I, I can't say enough, you guys, about what an amazing experience it is. Um, I studied abroad in uh, Paris for a year in college because I was a French major, and that was just the one year. Um, but it was just 
life changing. Like I often think about what would I, you know, who would I be? What would I be like if I hadn't had that opportunity? And I know so many people as adults who regret not studying abroad because it's the one time in your life as a college student where you don't have to worry generally about having a roof over your head and paying bills and having a job while you're in school and all those sorts of things. And you really can be there to study and travel and meet amazing people and have these experiences without too much of a care in terms of you know adult responsibilities. So do take advantage of it. It is an absolutely incredible experience. And when you study internationally, whatever it is you're studying, you get this different lens than you do when you study in our home country, because you're looking at whatever your subject matter is through that global view. Um, and that is so, so valuable. So I, I, I can't say enough about it. Um, so, all right, I'm, 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 I'm hoping somebody's gonna answer to, or gonna ask another question. I'm just like talking. Any last questions for our reps? Okay, uh, but they are there for you if you think of anything later. Um, so for now, um, I guess we'll wrap up and I wanna thank the, the students for being here and thank you so much to our university representatives for being with us this morning. Um, I'm so grateful to all of you. Thank you for all that information and for your your um, your warmth and your friendliness and and you know that really comes across and, and I can say from experience that, that that is what you get in Ireland, um, kind of like everywhere. So um, thank you so much for sharing sharing all of that with us. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Thanks yeah, so much. Thank you, Daphne. Thanks, Daphne. And Enjoy. thanks for not, not a 2 a.m. call, Daphne. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We, we do really, appreciate that so yes. much. Yes. <laughs> We've had a, a number of events this month and a couple in the evening, and, and some of our reps have been so incredibly gracious to join <laughs> us in the middle of the night for them. So, yes, we're, we're so, so um, appreciative of that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, let's see today what's today is Wednesday yes today's Wednesday um, we have our study in Asia session at 3 p.m today and then tomorrow morning is our very last workshop which is um, our uh, study in Wales workshop so hopefully some of the students will join us for either of those all right thank you Thanks so again. much bye, everybody bye. have a great day bye. stay in touch bye everyone bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Best of luck next